Well, with equity markets rallying and we're seeing some all-time highs, today is a great example of how quickly things can shift. It was looking like a broad up day. Um, every single sector was rallying, particularly in the U.S. Then you get one Fed comment about rate cuts. This is coming from uh, Neil Kashkari, the Minneapolis Fed president, that maybe we don't get a rate cut in 2024. And all of a sudden, we moved lower. Our next guest says you don't necessarily have to raise a lot of cash to minimize volatility in your portfolio. Let's bring in Pierre Wiemey, Head of Investment Strategy at UBS Canada. He joins us with some of his insights. Pierre, I, I think today was a great example of, um, you know, it seems like this market is Teflon, but there are still some anxieties about rates that kind of uh, percolate beneath the surface. Yeah, well, it's a market that's priced for perfection to a large extent. So uh, any amount of uncertainty uh, appears to have uh, quite an impact on, on equity prices and risk risk taking in particular. So yeah, it, it, you got to be cautious out there. It's uh, we're not exactly at forty two hundred on the S and P either. So it's uh, valuations are getting stretched. And so one might think, all right, if I want to insulate from volatility, I just take some chips off the table, raise cash. Um, what other strategies should investors look into? Well, typically the primary or the primary one is obviously diversification. That's uh, that's the best thing you can do, really, in terms of protecting capital, insulating against volatility. I mean, you'll never avoid volatility, particularly if you're invested. And we typically tend to keep our clients invested in the market because you you risk more by being not invested than you do by being invested over the longer term. So diversification for sure. Uh, right now, we prefer fixed income because uh, notwithstanding any talk about no rate cuts this year and whatnot, we think the U.S. economy will slow in the second half in particular. What you have to look out for there is what's happening on the employment side and um, where there are some early signs that the, um, the labor market in the U.S. Is, is starting to soften. So that would be the key for the Fed. When, when the labor market turns, the unemployment rate has already gone up, it continues to go up, then uh, I think that's the that's time when the Fed's going to move, uh, move in terms of cutting rates. So uh, be in the bond market, be in fixed income, we've extended duration. When it comes to equities, uh, it's surprising because uh, even uh, large cap growth equities, uh, for example, I mean, you know, clearly some of them are ex overextended in terms of the multiples, but it's still an area we would favor, find a way to be present in that area. And then diversify, I guess you could call it a barbell portfolio, diversify into commodities, industrials, and energy. That uh, kind of gives you um, kind of both sides of the equation. It's surprising sometimes. I mean, technology can be somewhat of a defensive area because it's really the only area that's giving some growth in earnings. So far this year, you looked, um, we've seen the revisions on earnings have been uh, to the upside in, in energy and technology. And to the downside in most of the other sectors on the S&P. So, uh, yeah, you got to follow the earnings to a large extent, and that's what we tend to do. And uh, so that's another another way of reducing volatility. And probably the last one is we tend to emphasize alternatives within our, our client portfolios. Obviously, if you're in a growth portfolio, but even there, I mean, if you're predominantly equity, you could still invest in some form of alternatives. Like you use a lot less volatility. And that's something we put a lot of emphasis on is uh, how do you reduce that volatility? You know, equity volatility is anywhere between 13 to 15 percent on a per annum basis. But, uh, you know, our portfolios, even some of the growth portfolios, the volatility can be as low as five or seven percent. And you do that with alternatives, either structured products, or even with gold, for example, um, we have some gold holdings in the portfolio. Uh, you do it with hedge funds. You do it with various other alternatives like private equity, private debt. Um, yeah, infrastructure. So those are ways uh, you look at typically the pension fund in Canada, their investments and in alternatives are quite substantial. We're not quite as high as that, but we do allocate a quite a substantial position within what we consider to be kind of a semi-equity bucket, but it's low volatility.